The streets of the Bronx has seen the rise of talented drill rappers who are blowing up with their music. Rappers like K-Flock have come from being unknown to take the center stage in the Bronx rap scene. But with this explosive of raw rap talents comes a gang war that is taking countless young lives. In today's video, I'll be talking about the scary story of K-Flock. Before we start the video, make sure to leave a like, and if you would like to join this month's giveaway of one of these items on the screen, then all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and watch this video to the end to comment the hidden keyword. Good luck! K-Flock is one of Bronx's hottest drill rappers at the moment. He's currently making a name for himself in the rap scene. Within a few years of being in the rap game, he has quickly established himself as a force to be reckoned with. He initially didn't start as a rapper and didn't take music seriously. But through the influence of his longtime friend and fellow rapper Dougie B, he decided to burst into the rap scene. The release of his first song titled FTO saw him gaining massive attention from fans of the rap genre. The song, which is a remix of the 22G's song, has been streamed hundreds of thousands of times on YouTube. In August 2021, he remixed Siggy Black's song Dishonest and called it Being Honest. At the time of making this video, the song has been viewed more than 4 million times on YouTube. If you ask me, I'll say that's quite massive for the 18-year-old rapper. Due to the success of the song, G Herbo jumped on the remix of the song. It's also rumored that the young rapper has signed a huge deal with a major record label, but this still stands to be proven. It won't come as a surprise if this is true, seeing how far he has come in just a short span of time. But beyond all this fame and success is a dark and violent reality. K-Flock is in the middle of a deadly gang war, which has put him at odds with a family member. In a few moments, he is spent in the limelight he has been served with losses of some of his close associates. These losses, as you probably have guessed, occurred as a result of gang-related violence. The streets of the Bronx, as you know, is filled with various gang groups who conflict with each other, from Crips to YGs to Young Gunners or OGs to Sev Side. These street gangs are territorial, and sorting out disputes with the use of violence is something considered normal by them. K-Flock and his blood cousin, D-Thing, have found themselves on opposing sides of the war due to their different gang affiliations. D-Thing, who is one of the YG's main rappers, has not failed to diss his cousin at every opportunity he gets. K-Flock, who on the other hand is affiliated with the EBK gang, has also been returning the taunts with distance of his own. Isn't it crazy how the streets could pit blood relatives against each other in what I consider to be a senseless war? It makes me wonder if there are adults in the family who can call both of them to order. Now the gang war, which has started with dissing between gang members of social media, has taken a drastic turn following the murder of 19-year-old Tyquil Doherty. Tyquil was a buddying rapper who performed under the name Ty Swish. He was shot in the head in the lobby of his apartment building. He was said to have run outside from the pain and collapsed after he was shot. According to reports from neighbors and close friends, Ty was a good kid with a big heart and he rarely got in trouble. A family friend who gave her name as Taisha said her two children and Dorothy's mother find him unconscious on the ground outside the building. Tyquil had been rushed to St. Barnabas Hospital by medics, but there it was too late as he died from his wound. So far, no arrests have been made by the police as regards to this murder. The only clue was that the killer was said to have fled in a dark-colored four-door sedan. The killer is still at large. It was alleged that Ty had gang affiliations, as you would have expected. His gang members had been enraged by his murder. They had retaliated to even the score. The victim of this retaliation was a close associate of K-Flock, 13-year-old Jarian Elliott. Jarian Elliott, who had just graduated from middle school, was said to have been present at the scene of Ty Quill's death, and there's a possibility that he might have been involved in the murder of Ty. It's not clear if he's the one that shot Tyquil, but his presence alone at the scene of the crime was enough reason needed by his killer to target him. A review of a surveillance video showed the moments leading to Jarian's death. In the video, he and a friend could be seen walking along the road, and unknown to them, a car had been driving alongside him. The shooter had gone out and fired shots at him. Jarian's friend escaped, but Jarian was not lucky as he was shot in the chest and leg. The killer had then immediately driven away from the scene. It was a daring attempt by his killer as the incident happened in broad daylight. Jarian, who was immediately rushed to the hospital, was pronounced dead by medic. Jarian was said to be associated with the Crips gang and I would say he was already established in the world of crime. It's worthy to note that he's been arrested twice this year before his death. This is not all there is concerning his criminal activity. 
He was wanted for eight felonies, including robbery and assault. According to reports, he had spent time at a juvenile detention center and seemed to be on a better path. A friend of the deceased of Jarian had warned him on several occasions to decease from gang-related acts, but all her warnings had fallen on deaf ears. Following the death of Jarian, threats of revenge by his gang members started making rounds on social media, and it doesn't come as a surprise that a few hours after Jarian's death, another teenager was killed in retaliation. Raymond Gil Medrano, aka Rara, who was only 16 at the time of his death, was the next in line of the revenge killings. According to reports, Ra Ra was a gang member who was linked to the YGs or Young Gunners gang. He was also established in the world of crime, and at the time of his death, he was wanted by the authorities for stealing a car at gunpoint. A police source had revealed that he had also had two other gun cases for which he was wanted. Ra Ra was brutally murdered by two males on scooters. According to reports, Ra Ra was taking a cab to a recording studio when he was shot on the corner of East 178th Street and Webster Avenue. His killers had pulled up on scooters and opened fire, hitting them in the back seat. Ra Ra was said to have been present at the scene of Elliot's murder, but it's uncertain if he had anything to do with his death. Isn't it crazy that these gang groups were killing members of rival gangs who were present in a crime scene? Is it possible that these teens that were killed were innocent and they only happened by chance to be in the vicinity of those crime scenes? But then these gang members don't care about that. When they're out for blood, they become blind to reason. Interestingly, Ra Ra had previously survived the shooting on July 7, 2020. The details of this particular shooting are not known as public information on it is very limited. Following the death of Ra Ra, K Flock took to his Instagram to celebrate the death of his rival and Jarian's alleged killer. I know how crazy that sounds. It's insane that the streets had turned these teens into stone cold killers who have little to no regard for human life. I feel the move K-Flock made by jumping on social media to celebrate the death of a foe was very insensitive and dumb. It's insensitive in the sense that a relative of the dead Ra Ra, probably his mother or brother, could have found these reactions on his online accounts and it would have grieved them even more to find out that someone was celebrating the death of their beloved in such a disrespectful manner. Also, I feel it's dumb because Ops, who were Ra Ra's friends, could also be watching and it would have given them a reason to harm K-Flock if they wanted to. It was rumored that Ra Ra was killed in retaliation to Jaryan's death because he had gone online to mock the death of Jaryan. This, I think, is very possible because cases like this are not unheard of. And what I feel was a bit to also add to the chaos of the war, k Flock dropped a track on August 16th titled, Is You Ready? The track is a diss song aimed at rival rappers, which includes his cousin, D-Thang. In the song, he could be heard rapping the lines, Go ask my ops, it get ugly. I could douche like Ice did to Sunny, like, I'm thinking lacking, that nigga a dummy, nigga a dummy. Words on the streets is that these particular lines were aimed at his cousin, D-Thang. This would further prove the absence of love between these two. I'm beginning to wonder what might have caused this beef in the first place. Was it only because they were on rival gang? Or does the root of this bad blood between them go deeper than that? I'm pretty sure there's more to the bitterness, because I doubt if being in a rival gang is enough to make them forget about their family ties. I can also help but wonder how many members of the family are reacting to this show of what I consider immaturity between the two of them. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Now D-Thang, after listening to the Is You Ready track, couldn't help but react to the disrespectful track his cousin had released. He quickly went onto social media where he made his feelings about the track known. In the video, he could be heard saying, can't wait to see auntie now. Can't wait to see auntie now. Huh. Two weeks after the release of the diss track, Is You Ready, k Flock decided to direct his musical energy to something less violent. He went ahead to release the track, Being Honest, which was dedicated to his deceased friend, Jaria. In the song, he could be heard rapping, Lately I've been feeling alone, alone, but I'm clutching my chrome, my chrome. Pray to my mama, I'm gonna make it home. 20 missed calls, I ain't answering my phone, my phone. Then I heard JB ain't make it home, home. They say, Flocka, keep up and be strong, strong. Nah, why? Because that shit was wrong. It wouldn't also come as a surprise when a few weeks after the release of the diss track by K. Flock, another of his close associates was brutally murdered. This time around, it was a 16-year-old called Nisaya Sanchez. This was a huge loss for K. Flock as Nisaya Sanchez was his right-hand man. According to reports, two men had jumped out of Grey Honda Accord, walked up to Nisaya Sanchez, and shot him in the head and chest on East 187th Street near Prospect Avenue in Belmont around 12.50pm. It's just so crazy that this crime occurred in broad daylight. 
I don't know if these men thought they could commit such horrible crimes and drive off into the sunset. But the fact that they chose to carry out this act in broad daylight increases the chances of being identified by people. But then again, nobody would have thought to give the hoodlums a second look once guns started going off. I also wonder what might have gone through the mind of those killers as they pumped Nasiah full of lead. Nasiah Sanchez was not the only victim of this horrible incident. A 23-year-old man who was with him was also injured in the shooting, but luckily he survived. It was speculated by the police that Nasiah Sanchez might have not been the target of the deadly shooting, and he probably just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. What you think about this speculation by the police? Do you think Nasiah Sanchez was not the actual target in the incident that led to his death? Is it possible that the other man was the actual target and Nasiah Sanchez just happened to be in the way? Interestingly, three weeks before his death, Nasiah had been busted for gun possession after he was seen with a 38 caliber pistol sticking out of his waistband a few blocks from where he was killed. According to reports, Nasiah was a member of the Ray Wade Crew Gang, a subset of the Crips, and had been arrested 18 times, 10 felonies and 8 misdemeanors dating back to May 2017. Some of the charges on his record included weapon possession, assault, grand larceny, criminal mischief, and unauthorized use of a vehicle. Right after the death of Nasiah Sanchez, d -Thing couldn't help but let the opportunity to diss an enemy go to waste. He went onto social media and dissed the dead Nasiah Sanchez. It's obvious that he did this to indirectly taunt k Flock, as the deceased Nasiah was his right-hand man. The gang battle on the Brock still rages on, with members of rival gangs being dropped now and then. There's no end in sight to this war and I feel it would be a big loss if the Bronx loses one of these talented young rappers to this senseless war. That's all I've got for you on the scary story of K-Flock. Feel free to let me know what you think about this video. You can join the ongoing conversation in the comments section or initiate a conversation there. Hey you, yeah you, you like the video? Great, we got another one for you that we guarantee you'll like. And all you have to do is click on the screen. It's free and without any hidden fees, but you have to click on fast because this message will self-destruct in five seconds.